Good morning, this is Angela with Park Rose Permaculture. <laughs> Still quite chilly, I can see my breath this morning. Had to break the ice on the ducks' buckets of water. So please, even though it's sunny and beautiful in the middle of the day, don't be tempted to plant out your tomatoes here in Portland, Oregon. Don't do it, it's too early. I've tried to make this video several times and the recycle truck keeps going by and my neighbor keeps running a saw. So let's see if we can get through it this morning really quickly before I have to head off and help my dad with some projects. The reason I'm up here is I want to talk about this tree, which is my Stanley plum. But more importantly, I want to talk about the plants that are surrounding this tree and supporting it. I have a video on guilds and I see so many questions about them. I thought that this year I will try and focus specifically on some of the guilds I have in my garden and talk a little bit about the design strategies for them. So it's real early in the year, so it's hard to see everything, but I just redid this bed this past weekend. Whoa. So I figured this would be a good time to talk about this bed. So a guild is a design strategy in permaculture in which we take a main plant like a tree, usually a tree, could be something big like a blueberry or an aronia berry. So it could be a large shrub, an elderberry, but usually it's a tree. And around that tree, we plant support plants and fungi. So folks can get real bogged down with what plants are right and what plants are wrong to put into a guild. And I would encourage you not to get stressed out about it. If you follow the loose guidelines that are set out about how to do guilds, it's hard to do it wrong, especially if you enjoy it. And I also encourage you to think about guilds as an aesthetic design element as well as a functional one. Make sure you put plants that you enjoy and that serve the purposes that you are looking for. So we start with our main tree and around it, we want to put species that um, are dynamic accumulators and plants that have big roots and break up clay soil and plants that bring in beneficial insects and plants that deter insect pests and plants that have perhaps um, a growth habit that does very well under this tree and provide a secondary benefit to us, so a medicinal plant or another food plant. We can think all the way from ground cover plants and root crops to woody shrubs to even vines. This guild doesn't have a vine, but it does have a climber. And we wanna stack these plants in here so that they shade the soil and help the tree conserve water and so that they deter weeds by being packed in here. I really love the look of dense plantings and they also are functional in suppressing weeds and conserving water. So let's start with some of the things in this bed. So this bed, I just redid it. It folds out here onto my driveway. This Spanish lavender, which I did a video on last summer, um, is very large and it had some dead material here, so I cut it back. And then this bed tends to overflow into the driveway, so I just took some bricks and pebbles that I had and uh, made a little berm so that this soil stops slumping over. Now here, this plant is a great native beneficial guild plant, insectary plant, medicinal plant, and that's yarrow. And unfortunately, it, had, it has a tendency to walk, it sets seed, so it can become weedy. Um, it sets seed, and this is the native one, so it has some lovely white flowers on it, but they come in a whole variety of red and pink and yellow, white. And it sets seed, but it also just kind of spreads vegetatively. So it had filled this entire area, and I didn't really love the look of it. It was just a whole bunch of white flowers, and it needed some help. So I dug up a bunch of it, and I left kind of a um, swath here and a clump here. So this plant does a very good job of outcompeting weeds, but um, it also needs a little bit of help on its own kind of staying well behaved. 
and it's going to provide those umbel shaped flowers which attract beneficial parasitoid wasps and it's going to attract um, other pollinators as well and it's going to help suppress the growth of other weeds and it's a native so i have this yarrow here as an herbaceous um, beneficial in my guild but now i suddenly had all this space here where i took out all of this yarrow so I have my lavender here. This is again, Spanish lavender and I have a white English lavender here. Those attract bees. Those are um, plants that I harvest and use the flowers from, but they're also an insectary plant. And also this one is a culinary plant as well. So I had this space and I put a germander here and I put a potentilla here that I had from another place in the garden where it wasn't doing well. And then I actually took some cuttings of my um, favorite unnamed blue geranium and I put them in here and they're little tiny ones and they'll take a while to get going. And my thought process here was, I wanna provide a diversity of plants and a diversity of colors so that I enjoy the look of this bed. So I have the white umbel shaped flowers, the potentilla will have yellow flowers and it'll get quite a bit taller and it will um, pair very nicely with the purple flowers of the germander and the purple flowers of the hardy geranium. And they all have different leaf shapes and they all grow to different heights. So my hope is they will all complement each other aesthetically up here right by my front door. Also in this guild, I have um, perennial leeks and I have native iris. And over here I have A, I think it's called Lavender Crush. It, I have a um, soft spot for rescuing the 75% off roses at the end of the season, provided they are disease resistant uh, varieties. And this is a climbing rose. So someone was throwing away this old ladder and I always like to reuse old stuff. I love that kind of wabi-sabi eclectic scrounge and repurpose look. Um, my kids really love, we live um, not that far from the ocean, so my kids love to collect uh, sand dollars and I never know what to do with them, so I just put them out in the garden and eventually they start to decompose and then they go into the soil where they provide calcium for the plants. So we have lots and lots of sand dollars everywhere from my kids. So um, I have this rose here and it is a climbing rose that gets about eight to 10 feet tall. So it's gonna fill this space and provide a lush array of blooms along the path and um, provide visual interest to get me out here in the garden. And also this is a variety that's not a super tight, um, heavily ruffled rose. So it does still maintain its pollinator benefits. Underneath I have planted some sweet peas. You can see I use pea brush so that they are able to reach the first level of strings. These are actually um, apple prunings. So my sweet peas will come and fill in here and grow up along, along the side. So I hope that gives you a little quick look at what you can do with a guild. I have huge diversity in my guilds because I don't wanna get bogged down with I have to do the same beneficial plants. I have to do comfrey around every single one. I have to do native iris around every single one. I have to do oxalis or I have to do um, some other kind of creeping ground cover time or what have you. So the key for me with guilds is I need to really feel like I am enjoying the look, the aesthetic. May not be your aesthetic, but it's mine that I'm enjoying a diversity of plants. Oh, I just moved some aquilegias here. These are very dark purple. Um, I moved them out of the way of the greenhouse foundation I'm working on. So they're very dark purple and they will complement the purples elsewhere over here and the light purples. So when you're working with your guilds, feel free to experiment. You can't go wrong having more biodiversity, planting more plants around your fruit trees will benefit them. Don't feel like you have to rigidly subscribe to a set list of plants that seem permaculture-y enough. Plant your garden so that you enjoy it 
And the reality is if you are planting flowering things that are well suited to this aspect, here it's very sunny and so I have plants that do well with a lot of sun and not much watering, especially down here because the soil is not very, very thick. So I'm planting plants that are going to be successful, that are beautiful, that I'll enjoy, that bring a benefit to me as the gardener and a benefit to this plum tree and support it. Help it conserve water, help reduce weed competition at the base of my tree, help bring in beneficial insects and pollinators. So thanks for watching this morning. When you go to plant your fruit trees, don't feel like you have to ask, oh no, what specific plants work well in my plum guild? What specific plants do I need for my apple guild? Feel free to embrace a diversity of plants that you enjoy that work in the aspect that you are planting in. And know that it's okay to lift things and move them. It's okay to try again if a plant doesn't do well in a guild. The whole idea is that you are looking to support your fruit trees and you are looking to enjoy your garden more. Continue to observe and interact and see what's doing well. And just enjoy your garden knowing that you can't go wrong with guilds. It's a fun process. It's a really enjoyable process to lift and shift and move and tweak your design and have the freedom to do that until you get exactly what you want and you enjoy in your garden and what is best supporting your fruit trees.